Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hey, everybody. Um, happy Thanksgiving to my U.S. friends. <laughs> and uh, We just celebrated on Thursday. It is Saturday the 25th of November. Um, we're going to have a regular podcast episode. I've got some things to talk about. A couple acquisitions. One finished thing, not knitted, um, and lots of in progress projects. Um, plus like some holiday prep talk, I think. I think that's the season we're in. So um, let's start off with a new to you um, what I'm wearing. So I said I would be working through my closet and things that I had not shown you yet. Um, and as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the things I want to frog. <laughs> or give away also that I don't even want to wear in, on an episode. This is something I finished this February. It's not something I wear super often. It is worsted weight all over color work. Um, I'll get up and show you. I did three, three um, background colors and I don't gravitate towards this a lot and I'll tell you why, um, but partly because I finished it in February. It was cold for a little bit. I wore it a couple of times and then it hasn't really been cold enough to wear it um, yet the rest of this year. But this is called Claire de Lune and it is um, by the Petite Knitter. Not to be confused with Petite Knits. <laughs> the Petite Knitter. Her name is Wei Qian and um, I'm just gonna, she uh, lives on the archipelago islands in the Arctic. So if anyone ever goes on her Instagram, uh, her Instagram is the petite knitter and it's, um, it's the cutest Instagram ever. <laughs> she has an aesthetic, um, a very defined, well-defined aesthetic. She does actually, she has like this year made a couple of things with some light blues and some light pinks in there, but mostly she's a totally neutral knitter. And, um, does a lot of color work pattern and a lot of like kind of heavier weight stuff. She lives in the Arctic. Hello, everybody. This is what she needs to be knitting. Um, she has some really, really fun, like denser color work socks and mittens. And she has a bunny named Sasky and Sasky is often featured on her Instagram. And she has a couple of bunny, like jumper patterns, <laughs> like for the bunny, not featuring bunnies, which is so cute. Um, Testing for her was actually, it was a good experience. Um, I liked doing this test knit. There weren't a ton of us in it. Um, this is my first all over color work and only, I don't have any others right now, right? I don't think so. Um, sweaters, you know, as so, and I've done like, you know, I did like the, the W on Mike and baby Theo's little jumpers I made. I've done some like weaving after on baby Whidbeys, but yeah. So, um, let's discuss, uh, my project on Ravelry doesn't have so many notes. Um, but I did make the size five. It is supposed to be 50 and three quarter inches chest circumference. So that gives me almost four inches. Um, of positive ease. And let's see what notes did I put in here? I did use a five millimeter needles, which I think is the recommended needle size, um, for all of the color work. I think even maybe even the ribbing. Um, and I'll talk about the ribbing, why you would use the same size for that. Uh, I knit everything per pattern. My body circumference, I think I, my notes say, and then I'm being closer to 50 inches. Okay. Um, and I used for this, I used, um, two yarns. So I used some, the, the white ish color is Cascade 220. Um, the non superwash version, uh, which is called natural. That's the color. And then I used three colors of, um, knit picks, simply wool worth the worsted, not the Aaron. And I have Wilhelmina, um, Winnie and Wallace. And I think it's, I think this one is, I think that's in order. Wilhelmina, Winnie and, Winnie and Wallace. Yeah. Okay. I think that's right. 
Anyway, that's a lot of things I've just told you. Let me show you what it looks like. So, um, again, with this whole, I could have done the yoke a little higher um, and done a longer section of this mid middling color. I probably would have liked it better that way. Honestly, um, I had talked to a friend about doing, do I do the light on the top or the bottom? And I have wide hips. So I was like, I don't really want the light on the bottom that might like draw attention to that. I probably would wear it more often if it was the darker color on top. Just this is like, this is a better contrasty color for me than this where like really washes me out. It's fine. Um, especially if I'm just wearing it and I'm not on a lot of meetings or I'm on a couple of meetings, like my coworkers don't care. <laughs> Not generally fashionistas, especially the team I'm working with most often right now. <laughs> Dudes, that's who I'm working with. They don't care. Um, but yeah, so it, the what I do, okay, some things I really love about this pattern. It's a circular yoke top down. This is called corrugated ribbing. And it's interesting because um, it's just two colors. So it's just two color ribbing and um, the reason that you work it on a size five needle, th like all of the pieces is because it, it does not have as much give as regular ribbing. So it really sucks it in. So, um, you don't want to do size needing needle sizes down. Otherwise it'll be like, it would be too tight. It would be like too tight to get over my head if I did that. Um, but yeah, so otherwise just circular yoke. Um, okay, so a couple things I really love about how um, Wei Chin did this pattern is that like nothing has long f floats. So I'm gonna sh I'm gonna flip it inside out just like the bottom parts to show you because it's pretty on the inside. <laughs> Look at that. Um, yeah, no long floats anywhere. I believe uh, like in any in any of the color work sections. So it's so nice because you're not worried about like catching your floats. It does have some of that. I think like it's like a thing for color work yokes, yokes is like, especially because like right here, it's not quite as tight as it is like right here. So it, sometimes it gets a little bit of puckering. Um, also, I haven't like steamed this or anything since I first finished it. Uh, and yeah, it lays okay. It lays fine. Um, I actually also think I don't, I didn't wet block this. I'm pretty sure that when I finished this, I just steam blocked it pretty aggressively. I got it like relatively wet. Um, I would probably, I will probably wash this again sometime this year and like really wash it and let, like let it lay out, um, on a day when the heater's really working. So I know that this will get nice and, you know, relaxed, uh, but dry, dry thoroughly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't 100% love circular yolks because I think sometimes you get like the armpit weirdness. Um, this one though really doesn't have, it's not giving me like bat wings or anything weird. So that's like pretty good. Um, but yeah, like here it is. Um, it was really fun to make. Worsted weight. It went quickly, even for color work. Um, I would probably like it better if it was all one color too, but I had like a sample pack of these, this Simply Wool, um, from Knit Picks from like a long time ago, which I still have some of it down here, like including these like two-toned ones. But um, I wanted to just use it from my stash and so I did. And here we are. Uh, yeah, it's, and also, okay, so the other thing I don't love, there's no neck shaping, which would be really hard to do because of the all over color work. So like for circular yokes, you can add some either like right before you start the color work, like right under the collar, or you could add them usually under if it's like a if it's a neck like this is the color work you can add them under also which just you know sh shoves your sweater up a little bit um this doesn't have any and so I do feel like it's like a little bit choking me <laughs> it's not really there's plenty of space I just like I don't love that feeling on my neck like I want it to sit there that would be so comfortable if I just had a little more space. Um, anyway, so you'll probably see me adjusting it, but this is Claire de Lune. Uh, but yeah, I think like if you like color work patterns, she's got some really great ones. She has this really pretty flower one that she came out with this year. I think it's just color work in the yoke. Uh, but there's more information for you. If that doesn't bug you, then like I say, go for it. Um, okay, what are we working on? Oh, I do have one finished thing. Um, it is not a knit thing. It's not a crocheted thing, but it is yarn. 
And I'm not going to keep it with like its own section. I'm just going to throw them in where they are. Like, okay. So, um, since I got the wheel, I wanted to practice on some less expensive, um, yard, uh, fibers. <laughs> So what I got from La Mercerie when we um, finished our class, we got like a slight discount for that like day of the last class. So I got a couple of braids. I think I showed you guys and I, um, I got like one braid, one braid and I got some four ounce, like they have these big balls of this. Oh, I'm just flashing it for you. These big balls of these different Corydale Ashford tops. And I got Maya to just like pull me off four ounces of three different colors. I decided to just work with two of them to start, um, partly because the last color is a really dark charcoal gray. And I'm thinking I want to use that in conjunction with one of my color work and do like a true barber pole as just things that I'm experimenting with, right? So this one is um, the navy blue and the natural light. And I made some pretty yarn. It's, it's like, this is definitely like bulky. So one of the things I was also working on, cause Maya said one of the things she had wished she had practiced more was spinning thicker yarn. That's thicker singles. And I think probably not as thick as this is what she meant, but because she got so used to spinning super fine singles that like, it was harder for her to get to like a DK weight. Everything she was spinning when she was playing was like sport or fingering. And that is something I'm looking forward to because that's probably what I would use most anyway, but it'd be nice if I could get myself like a worsted two ply or three ply, um, like from a pretty color braid to do, you know, some color work stuff because sometimes I want to knit a worsted sweater, especially like if I'm doing something for the kid. So I have two, um, Hanks, you can see this one has definitely got way more like little bloopies. And part of that is also just, um, I, Mike is making me a nitty naughty. Um, cause he's so nice out of PVC pipes cause I'm cheap. Um, but we didn't have it in the house and I finally got to plying and I was like, I need, I don't have enough bobbins. So I need this last bobbin to use again. So I'm going to wind off onto, I, I wound off onto his hand. So it's also much smaller than, you know, what I would normally do. This is probably like less than a yard, but, um, it's still, you know, he held, I wrapped, I did wash, I thwacked it on the ground. Um, I still haven't washed my fur skein. I like put that somewhere in this office and I don't know where it is. Um, but yeah, it looks, it's pretty. Um, you can kind of tell just cause of the way that it plied. It's still trying, okay. It's trying to like pick up all the yarn in the background. So what I'm trying to show you, um, that like the blue is clearly wrapped around more. Um, and mostly that's just because my, I did the natural light first, like the gray color, and I definitely was a little bit thicker on that, a little more consistent in the blue when I was working with it. There's still lots of thick and thin patches, um, but I'm very proud to have yarn, and I have eight, I have almost eight ounces, I mean, it's eight ounces pretty much of this, so I could actually make something with this, like maybe a little scarf or something fun. Um, that has just a little bit of texture in it. Uh, yeah, it's pretty though. <laughs> it's fun. It's definitely not like the most glamorous of spins, but it was a really good practice and it made me excited, um, to just be spinning like more regularly, like a, a little bit every day. So, um, I don't know, you know, I don't have a meter measure and I don't have a real nitty naughty. So I don't know how many yards this is, but I would very much bet this is somewhere between like an Aaron and a bulky. Um, you know, there's some bits that might be close to a worsted, but it's pretty thick. Um, and it's very plump and it feels really nice. And it like the finish, it's soft. Like it, it washed pretty soft. It's not, um, and it's also cause it's not spun super fine. So it's not like, um, hard at all not ropey. I mean, it looks a little bit ropey, but it's not ropey. It feels very soft. Okay. That is my finished skeins for this week. Um, my first, first finished all by myself yarn, which is kind of exciting. So I will, uh, actually I meant to do this last night, but I just was so tired. All I could do is like not think and work on some socks. Um, I will be, um, 
pulling out some fiber today to to work on. Um, I did spend time decorating the house, like I said <laughs> yesterday. By some time, I mean the whole day. Uh, okay, so what do we have to talk about? Let's go through test knits. So the first test knit I have much progress on. Okay, this, hold on. My acquisition is blocking my, my little computer stand here. Okay, so um, like I'm sure I, I said I was going to do this. I made too much progress on these because I was just like so excited about them. And um, so I have not done, but two complete sock tubes uh, for my kettle chip socks. And this is... Uh, this is a pattern by Maddie Mo, who is Momer01 on Instagram. Um, the test is not due till the end of the year. So I like really jumped the gun on this one. Um, they are, I am doing, there's toe up and cuff down written in the pattern. I did cuff down tube socks. Um, and I am going to add the after, it's an afterthought heel. So you can see there's nothing. This is, this is the back. Um, there is nothing there. <laughs> so I think the, her instructions, and I'm going to probably watch a YouTube video on this too, is like her instructions is like, you try it on or you measure where you think you, like where you know you want your, if you know how to measure your ease. I think that's part of it. But otherwise you can try it on and then um, you measure a certain amount from your end of your heel, like with when the sock is on and you like mark that with a little marker and that's where you'll cut. I want it to be close, like in, in between one of these lines, like, you know, even inside of one color, that's fine. Um, so I'll just, you know, measure and fudge from there, which is fine because they're socks. Uh, but I did do anatomical toes instead of, um, the toes that were written into the pattern, which were very basic toes and she didn't care for an adjustment um so that these will fit me super well hopefully um I did you know try them on while I was making them just to see how that lines up and I will take a picture when they're done um I won't probably hold my foot up for the camera because that would be um awkward <laughs> but I love the color they're so fun I just like could not this to me is like, I have not made a vanilla sock before. So this is my first like truly just knitting a sock. And um, A, the afterthought heel I think will be nice. What I'm going to try in my next pair, because spoiler spoiler alert, I got some more self-striping yarn from a D-stash. Um, I think I want to try a forethought heel. So you just do the same thing except for where when you want to get to your heel, um, especially if you're doing cuff down you just like weave or you you use like one scrap piece and so then when you're ready you just pull that out um which sounds easier I don't know I think it'll be fine either way it'll be fine this will be fine too um her instructions I've read through already and they seem pretty clear um so here's where I was though I was doing again cuff down so I did last week like this whole part and I did them pretty much last weekend I just like it was like really relaxing for me to just be knitting on these. Um, I had a great time. Okay. And then hopefully I'll do the heels maybe this week, maybe not this week, but um, I probably won't bring them out to show you again until, you know, obviously until I finish them. Um, let's see. What else do I have to say? Um, I made those uh, size four, which is 72 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needles. The black is Cascade heritage sock in black, um, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 437 yards for hundred grams. And the self striping, which is the fun, fun part here is white birch fiber arts, um, in the color once bitten on her sock base, which is, uh, an 80, 20 and 200 yards for hundred grams. So, I mean, together they feel pretty good. Uh, that's also the once bitten is a two ply and heritage is a four ply. And honestly, like you can't tell when it's knit up, it just looks like a sock like between the two. Also look how much winter hair is on there. Anything black and it just like sucks her hair out of the atmosphere around here. Um, okay. Let's go to 
the other test on the needles. Oi, it's all the way at the bottom of this bag. Um, okay. This is my duo tone. So the duo tone is coming along. Not tons of progress this week, but definitely some. Let me find my little progress marker. Dooby dooby doo. This one has another Hello Lavender progress marker. Oy vey. Um, and it's that little book. Gosh, a book with a flower. It's like two of her best little things that she makes. They're so cute. There we go. Okay, um, I have definitely made some progress as, as you can see from said marker. I just had a little bit done and I, you know, more than, I did two times the what I had last week, I think. Um, and so it's coming along. I'm at the stage where I'm long enough now, just about where I could split first sleeves and back and front now, and then pick up and do more of the body later. I'm actually kind of enjoying just doing this body. So I think I might pretty much go until I'm out of at least the Surrey because it has less yardage than the fingering. And then maybe when I'm finished that ball, that'll be like my signal to move on to the front and the back. Um, there are lots of people in the test that are way further. Some of them are done already. Um, this test though is not due until January 2nd. Um, so I think originally I said it was like sometime dis mid December, which was our original timeline. Um, but we have since been given extra time. Sorry, I lost a couple of stitches and I'm going to just throw them back on. Um, we have since gotten an extension, um, partly because Rachel, <laughs> Rachel from ZZ Textiles had to actually order more yarn, um, to get through all of the, I mean, she just had a collection drop too, just so she didn't, you know, she could be dying her collection. Um, but she ordered more yarn because so many people ordered the non-superwash fingering to uh, like from the tester group. So a reminder, this is a collaboration pattern between Rachel Costello knit, um, design knitwear. That's her, her handle is Rachel Costello knitwear on Instagram. Um, she's the designer and uh, Rachel from ZZ Textiles, who is the dyer who just like supported. So we just got a discount. So um, yeah, the duo tone. I like, I'm, you can really see the color now though, coming out here. Like this is going to pop and this will be so much more prevalent in the collar, obviously, and the hem and the cuff. So like I do love, I love that pop of the ink blue. Um, and I think this is Marley enough. Like it doesn't, it's not just one tone. It is definitely a duo tone. <laughs> okay. So um, it's just a tube right now. So not that exciting, but let's talk about details. So this uh is a drop shoulder crew neck pullover. It's fingering plus a fluff. Uh, Rachel Costello's two samples are both in mohair, but I chose Surrey. Not just me, there were a couple other um, testers that chose Surrey. I am doing a size five, which is 54 inches. The recommended ease is between six and a quarter and 11 and three quarter inches of positive ease. For me, that's seven-ish inches. Um, I am, again, you, I am using ZZ Textiles. This is like the first test knit this year where I've bought yarn to test. Um, and I have done many a test knit this year. Um, and I've like maybe bought a little bit of yarn to supplement what I had in stash, but mostly all the other tests were stash knits. Um, okay, so the non-superwash fingering, the blue color is called ink, and it is 100% uh, non superwash merino two ply 400 yards for 100 grams and the surrey color is called leather and it is 74 percent baby surrey and 26 percent silk 328 yards for 50 grams so i'm loving i mean i love the combo the knit is right now pretty mindless like you just i'm in the round and you just have to pay attention to if you were because for the i cord it is an i cord so like one row you knit them the next one you ignore them you know like and, and you're just pulling your yarn behind um i just have to pay attention to which one of those i'm on uh, and then we'll get into the fun stuff soon okay let's do the next 
thing is, let's go do the Cinnabar shawl. I'm not super far on this. I have been pulling it out every couple of days to add some. I really want to get done my first ball of yarn, my first ball of um, spin cycle. I It would be fun. <laughs> It'd be fun to get through that. Um, so yeah, since last week, here's my little stitch mark. I really ought to change it to the other side. Um, another Hello Lavender Progress Keeper. And I have added, you know, five repeats or something like that. Not a ton. I'm pretty close to doing my next of these little bands though. So I'm excited to do that. This is a friend knit along I'm doing, um, with Maya, um, who is what Maya made on Instagram. Emily Curtis, who is and we Kurt um, also on YouTube, Gently Chaotic Knits, and Ariel, who is Ari Knits. And we are um, all local to Seattle, except for Emily, who is now traveling the world. <laughs> so wherever she goes, she's knitting this. And right now she's been in Argentina and Patagonia and she like in the cold down there and she's been knitting on this shawl and she posted a picture in her story at least the other day of her progress and it's gorgeous. So Ariel, Maya, and Emily all um, at least spun their contrasting color and Emily and Maya did their whole shawl. So they're doing like a fully hand knit and I can just see like why you would want to do your hand knits. One of the things I love though is like thinking about now I have all these fiber braids, a lot of which was gifted um, and I bought some more for my birthday, which will be coming in a little bit. Not my birthday yet. I like to front load for my birthday, partly because I'm a week from Christmas. So by that time, I'm just like baking and getting the house ready for Christmas. I'm not like usually in a whole bunch of birthday mood. Um, so the beginning of December is <laughs> when I gift myself things usually. Um, but yeah, so this one, I mean, like also how fun is this color contrast right now that you can see it growing? Like this is really maroony. This whole section is really purple. And this whole section up here is really, really dark. And it's like a dark gray, almost black color. So that's kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so I've been thinking about like how how they are doing obviously this is milled fiber. So it's different. And they have this like the ability to, to do longer color changes and just like with what they're, what they're picking for the fluff, but uh, you know, as they're going through um, all the, the fiber, but like just thinking about this, I was watching some stuff on fractal spinning. Like how do you pick how frequently you want your colors to change and some of that. And I am so interested to see what happens as I start experimenting with that myself. Um, I'm still going to work on some things that are not color changing. Like I have a couple of sort of like braids that are, the colors are like combed through. So it's not going to have like steep color changes, which will make it more interesting for me right now, but also allow me to still focus on just like practicing like consistency and thickness of fibers. Um, I also would like to work with something different. The Corydale was really enjoyable to me, my yarn that's on the ground, um, because the staple length is really long. And so that gives you a lot of room to play with. And also like, it's less likely that your yarn will like run away with you as you're spinning. I'm still like figuring out the speed of my feet and stuff. There's a lot of things to think about, <laughs> but I'm thinking about it while I'm knitting this too, which is pretty fun. So, um, a little bit of progress now. We'll keep trucking along on this. I'm excited for it to grow. It's now like I changed to the bigger needles last week and now it's like fully, it's big enough to be all the way on both of them. Um, okay. So that was, oh, did I even say anything about it? That's the Cinnabar Shawl by Andrew Mowry, who is Dry Renee Knits on Instagram and YouTube. Um, this is a one size pattern. It is asymmetrical, um, four millimeter needles. I am using Pearl Soho Good Wool in, um, Driftwood Gray, which is undyed, 100% Andean wool. It is 383 yards per 100 grams. And then the other is Spin Cycle dyed in the wool. The color is absolute zero. Um, which, I mean, I don't even know what that means. And it is 100% American wool and it's, uh, 200 yards for whatever weight you're given, which is just about 50 grams. Um, I don't have tons to share about this one, but I did finish my first section of the calm down cardigan. Here is where I ended. Um, I put this marker on and this one is strategic. It's a little bit backwards though. Um, so this is my flock 
marker from Hello Lavender, which again, I'm just gonna like, I really only have two sets from her and it's so many because you get like two or three of the little flowers or whatever the accompanying thing is and then your like main one. So for me, I just have the book and I have the little flock. Like this is, this was specific to flock 2023. Um, and I, that's enough for my projects right now. I think there, she, that's, she's pretty much on all of them except for maybe one. Um, which is fun. Reshma is so nice. And also these are so gorgeous. So it's so fun to continue using them and staring at them. But, um, these are not even just, I'm knitting this, not even just with Seattle friends, but with, uh, friends from further afield. Um, and this is my left shoulder panel. And that is, it goes just to here ish. Mid bust. And that is all I have done. Um, I didn't even pick up and do anything else. I think the next part is to do the right, um, saddle shoulder and then you connect and do the back and then you do this right side last before you connect the body. So I know what's coming. I just haven't done it. Uh, and this one is a, um, top down saddle shoulder cardigan with an applied button band. I am using or I am making a size four, which is 51 and a half inches. The recommended ease on this is huge though. It's like 10 to 12 inches. I didn't want it to be that oversized. So 51 is four ish, you know, 51 and a half, four and a half inches, um, which is plenty for me. I'll still be able to wear something underneath of it. Um, I just didn't want those super oversized fit. Um, the other thing I needed to do is like, I got this here. Cool. I, I can actually have enough like stitch mark, um, these are knit picks, needles, and cables, and I have like tons of the little stopper things. So I'll just leave this where it is instead of putting it on, you know, anything, um, another cord. And just, I have lots of these smaller cords. And I also have to just, the next thing will be on a long cord. So anywho, planning for the future. But I love the color. This is Bias. So oh, let's go through the rest of the details. Like it's Saturday. <laughs> I didn't do as much prep because also I haven't been at my desk for like two days, two and a half days. So I'm like not ready for the episode, but I wanted to film something to talk to you, you know, just hang out with you guys for a little bit today. Um, I am using four millimeter needles, which is the recommended size. I do 3.75 for the ribbing and 3.5 theoretically for the button band. We'll see when we get there. Um, I am using Wooly Knits cones um, and this is the merino base and it is a um the cone is a two ply is that right let me look at it yeah it's a two ply um I'm holding a double so I have like a basically a four ply going on here also you can see the textures is pretty nice um it's super even the color is gorgeous oh it's so pretty um okay and it's a hundred percent merino non super wash yarn um the cones are a lot of yarn so it's like 2500 yards for 500 grams and i am using um it held double so it's 257 yards for 100 grams when it's held double okay moving on let's do the last thing i had on the needles last week which is yeah i had five things kettle ship socks will be done soon so I'll be back to five things because I do have one new cast on to talk about um not a ton of progress here either this week because I don't know don't ask me why because I was working on the socks also it's uh, like a holiday and honestly as much as I have all these days off of work we've been busy which I'll talk about in a minute in a little bit um okay so here's where I was right here in the middle of the shoulder on my left side yeah and then um I'm done um interestingly there's no short rows and I don't think they're gonna be any short rows I mean that's a drop shoulder so it's not like I don't know like maybe you you don't necessarily must must have them um it's something I've learned just like in making things I do prefer knits that have a little bit more shaping I just feel like you're you're not like doing that adjustment when you're wearing them or whatever as much because they just sit nicely um but we'll see how this goes this is also like it's such a heavy yarn like the weight of the yarn um yeah 
We'll see how it fits. It is, I'm making a size five, which is 49 and a quarter inch bust. And the recommended ease is one to four inches. Oh, sorry. This is a Leith cardigan by Rebecca Klo, who is the Cryabea on YouTube and Instagram. Um, I am using a Sorella, I'm using Sorella Classic Worsted in three colors. This is Warm Glow. This little pinky color over here is Magic. And then this lovely speckly is Mrs. Patmore's Kitchen. Um, I did move my needles over, over. I'm still like all on one needle because A, I'm lazy. <laughs> and B, I just, um, I don't want to have like a bunch of ends and things flapping around. So as much as it's just getting heavy on this, like when I'm switching back and forth, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, I have one grown shoulder and one down here. Um, but I did move my needles over so I can just like now, um, pick up as soon as I am ready. It's just not ready for it the other night. And that's where I am. Um, Oh, so Rella Classic Worsted is 100% Superwash Merino. It's 218 yards for 100 grams. And I am using a, the recommended needle sizes, which are 4 millimeter for the body and 3.75 for the ribbing. So that's all the projects we had on the needles last week and everything we talked about. Again, right, no finished objects, so I didn't dwindle that yet. Though I'm very close. I don't need those kettle chip socks to be done soon, but because of my acquisition, which I'll, I'll show you very shortly, um, I kind of want them off the needle so I can make more. Okay, because they were so fun. And maybe not for me, maybe like gift nets because it's so fun. Um, so I do have my November socks, which as we know, I have not missed a month yet. I will get these done. It is November 20, what did I say? The 25th. Um, I have until the 7th of December to get these posted in the Farmer's Daughter Fibers Sock Squad, um, which I will talk about something else about that in a minute. So um, I have socks started. I am doing my Charlotte method, which somebody told me, commented the other week, it's called like knitting concurrently. I think that's what they said. I didn't go back and look actually, so don't quote me on that. Maybe someone else looked at the comment. Anyway, that makes sense. Um, I still, would, I'm gonna call it the Charlotte Method because that's the first time I saw it and you know, she should have something named after her. <laughs> Why not? Uh, there's no Megan Method for anything, just chaos. Okay, so, um, I, okay, so these are uh, the Hermione Everyday Sock. This is a pattern, it's a free pattern by Erica, um, I put her last name, Erica Luder, maybe is how you say it. Anyway, on Instagram, she is dreams and fiber. Um, yeah, you can just look these, I have it in my like, um, projects page. I have it started with like, no, not really anything with the start date right now. Um, but you can, uh, go find it. It's free. It is only written for one size though. Like clearly Erica, whoever she is, wrote a pair of a sock pattern for her size. Um, because you can really easily adjust this by four stitches to make any size you want, I don't think that's a problem. The only thing you'd have to adjust then too is your your heel flap, which if as long as you've made a pair of socks before is not a very hard adjustment, um, especially because the instructions for like the, the gusset and everything were, or like the heel flap, what is this called? Heel turn. The heel turn was like really easy to make that adjustment. I did cast on 72 stitches instead. I probably could have gotten away with 68. I tried them on and they're like, they're not going to have a ton of negative ease, like just a tiny bit. But, um, because this pattern is pretty like, it's not super stretchy, but it's pretty forgiving. Um, but let's look at it. So the only thing I like obviously put in that's not in the pattern is some stripes, mostly because um, I had a really hard time picking which color I wanted to use. The Knit Girls picked this dark, which I do love. I'm gonna feature mo more of this dark, but I really loved the idea of doing some extra like fun kind of striping in here um, with two colors. There we go. No, stop focusing on other things, camera. There we go. It's so fun. Um, okay. But you can see the texture here too, really nicely. It's so, it's so simple and it's so pretty. So all, I mean, it's a four stitch repeat and every other row, you're just changing where your one purl stitch is and every other row is knit. And, um, it just creates these kind of like columns, but it's like an offset broken 
it's not even like a broken rib. It's just like an offset seed stitchy type pattern. Um, and it's nice. And the pattern is all over in the foot or the leg of the pattern. And then, you know, obviously this just stuck in it on the bottom, which really features this yarn nicely. Like there's so much fun, yummy color in here. Um, so I have a second cuff too. So what I did last night is I like just knit a ton of the sock and I was like, I need to start. <laughs> I just need to start the other sock. Otherwise I'm going to get mad that this one is done and I have nothing done on this one. Um, so I'm going to actually just work on this one today and get through the heel, all of the heel, probably even to the gusset. Cause this one just super fast. Um, and then I will work on something else, but that's like probably going to be my focus for today. I really like them though. And so, yeah, so the heel is all in this darker color. Oh, I'll talk about the yarn in a second, but I think I might do the toe with another stripe pattern of some sort. And then the toe in like the end of the toe in this darker color, maybe the lighter color. I mean, one, one never knows. Um, so this is my, this main color is my sock squad color for this month, which is called purple coneflower and it is um rocky mountain pearls which is 80 percent superwash bfl 20 percent nylon it's my favorite of their sock bases it is a two ply it is 400 yards for 100 grams and it's just like nice and squishy feels super durable the socks i've got already made and i'm wearing in them are like really nice to wear um what else oh and then the my contrasting colors i am using two um different color basic sock yarn from back loop yarn co and these were i don't know um so the purpley color is definitely called um it's right here hold on is it this one yeah i have some in dk I just forgot what the name is. Oh, all is calm. So this is what the color is actually like in DK. It's a little bit lighter looking than this, but you can see it in the heel. There is all that, like there's a bunch of light pink and yellows and focus on it. Yeah. That's all just in this color, which is nice. Um, I got that for a t-shirt. I have a couple skeins of that actually it's this color combo I got. I got like, um, she has a color called Amber, Amber Meadows, which is close to this with less of the purple and it. it's just more like pinks and yellows. And then this, um, purpley color up here, I'm not sure which colorway it is. Cause I got like a bag of scraps from her. So like most of the skeins were like probably from socks that she made because it's like a lot of them were like 40 to 30 to 45 grams. So it's like what's left over from a pair of socks that you make, make yourself. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure what this other, this purpley color is. It could be, no, I think it's too, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't know what this one is. Something else from Erin. Um, but yeah, fun. That's my new cast on for this week. That's all. Uh, socks are fun. I. I am excited to get my, I think I, it'll ship out probably Monday, my, um, December yarn. And then that is it. Oh, what I was going to tell you is sock squad opens, I think December 1st, they have, um, at least released now the, um, inspiration for this year uh, for, sorry, for 2024 Sock Squad. And I think it's the setup is the same deal as this year. It's like you sign up and if you pay by the 10th of December, you'll get your January yarn. If you sign up after, then you'll just start in February just because that's how they do their billing cycle. Um, so like I've already paid for my last, my, my October bill was my last um, sock yarn because you're like paid up two months in advance. Um oy vey <laughs> um let me just drink a little coffee it's still morning here baby's down for her first nap and I figured I'd get some um filming in before and I will edit later in the day um the huskies 
play Washington State today and it's called the Apple Cup over here in Washington and it's a big deal. We're not actually doing anything for it this year. Our plans shifted. Um, so we saw Mike, uh, his brother and sister-in-law, their kids all last night and we were going to hang out today for the game, but their old, their, um, oldest is a nine-year-old and he apparently made his own plans for the Apple Cup, <laughs> which I find hilarious. So plans got moved and that's okay. Um, it's actually good for me though. I did not finish decorating y'all. I'm so close. Um, but my last tree, <laughs> a ridiculous statement the last tree is not done yet um which is our upstairs but that's also where the decorations go out so I was like it's a fine I will just finish up and um clear out the downstairs downstairs two trees are done but I have not done some of like the other signs and other things to put out um well, we'll be doing that today uh which is also why probably socks is the only thing my brain's going to be capable of working on okay so I have two acquisitions um, and I'll go through the first one cause this one's the most exciting cause it was free to me. Uh, uh, they are, and why it's so exciting is, uh, this is payment for my, um, back loop yarn co sample. So let me open it so I can show you where's the, and I just got this out of the, um, out of the mail. And I will tell you something. This is even more exciting than I thought it was going to be. So I got, I think I already told you guys this, but I got ghouls. So surprise, surprise, you guys remember this color. <laughs> this is the color I just used. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like that like weird freshly dyed scent, which I don't even know. I couldn't put, I mean, it's acid wash. It's like the acid dyes. What does that smell remind me of? Like, like book pages and like, I don't know, something else, but it smells good. Anyway, um, this is Ghouls and this is, uh, actually she didn't send me, which I wonder, I kept saying it was basic sock, which I'm pretty sure is what she put on her note to me, but what she sent to me is, um, the upgrade and, uh, it's the cashmere sock, her cashmere sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 10 per sent cashmere 10 percent nylon still 400 yards for 100 grams and then the um baby surrey alpaca it's just called her base is called surrey lace but and tw um 74 percent baby surrey alpaca 26 percent silk 328 yards for 100 grams and it is um such a pretty color I think on the cashmere I mean it looks really similar to the other one it feels similar too it does feel a little bit softer oh, so soft I mean, obviously this is soft too, but, um, I have a, a pattern picked out for this already, which is, and purchased and waiting to go, which is, um, wood anemone by, sorry, Nordland. Um, I might cast it on now cause I really want to wear this. Like this is like the most, I mean, I held this up to me on, in a finished sweater and I know it looks good. So I'm like really excited for this neutral. Um, and I have been also like dreaming all week about, and I think I picked out a pattern and I picked out yarn too, but then I'd have to buy, um, but going to get some bright red Christmas red, like that's the colorway yarn to make a red cable Christmas sweater. And I would love to do that, but I have been thinking about the fact that for Christmas, Last year, um, we were visiting the hospital, like leading up to Christmas because that's where baby was. And we were, then the hospital is like an hour from her house. So we were traveling a ton. We were like very not home very much. We came home with her on December 10th. And then like, that's a whirlwind of no sleep and craziness for your, so I don't remember Christmas last year, but I didn't do any Christmas baking. And that's one of my favorite things to do with the holidays is bake cookies. And I usually make, and I'm not, this is not an exaggeration. I wish it was thousands of cookies. <laughs> I usually make about a dozen kinds of cookies. Um, and that's like something I gift to people, um, our neighbors, some of our friends that are nearby, lots of the family will just get boxes. Like I buy like bakery boxes and fill them with cookies and people get a couple dozen cookies. 
And I would love to do that again this year. It does take a lot of time. I don't know that I'll do quite as many kinds of cookies, but like I have a really hard time narrowing it down <laughs> to what cookies I want to make most. Um, and I love, you know, like I, I'll do traditional chocolate chip, obviously. Um, and sugar cookies and gingerbread, but I also love to make like alfajores, which are, um, I have all these coworkers in El Salvador and that's like their national cookies, something they really love. And there's lots of forms of that in throughout all of Central and South America, but I use a, a Salvadorian recipe for it. Um, which is, if it's, some people don't know, it's like kind of like a sable cookie. It's a really kind of, um, shortbready type cookie, um, that's not very sweet, but you put dulce de leche and it's like a little sandwich cookie and then you powder sugar it and they are phenomenal. Um, I do my cookies with lime, um, as like the zest lime, so the lime zesty cookie. It's, they're so good. Um, I also like to make like, um, the Russian tea cakes, like the little crumbly pecan cookies. I like to make macarons, um, usually I make an eggnog cookie. Um, that's usually the macaron because I really love eggnog. Also what's in my coffee right now. <laughs> uh, I don't get much for the house. I usually get like one carton and, and put it in coffee for like a couple of weeks and then that's my done. But it is, um, it's like such a fun flavor for like cakes and cookies and stuff too. So we'll see. Anyway, that was a whole lot about not knitting, but like that's something that I'm really excited for. So and this is why I'm, I think I'm decided I'm not going to make the red sweater this year. I'd like to make one. I might make one next year. Maybe I'll do it with like a fun release color or I'll just make it with something like affordable because the color I was going to use is called Christmas Red from Cascade 220. Um, their non-super wash, which is what this is made out of. And it's really fine next to skin. I'm not super sensitive. To me, it's not an itchy yarn. It's a worsted weight it's 220 yards for 100 grams um actually I have some here is there nylon in it this is a this is the heathers version no just 100% wool so it's 100% wool um ugh, in their 220 and that's nice also for cables to have like really just wool because it'll like felt a little like as you wear it, it'll felt a little bit on the inside so the cables like stay um nice they don't they won't like droop and drape from all the nylon in it but um yeah I picked a really pretty pattern it wasn't gonna be just like it wasn't gonna be just like regular cables it's like kind of fun um I just like don't want to stress myself out to make that I have the duo tone to finish I've got you know another pair of socks will be coming very short in short order and I'd like to get those done actually before the end of the year so I can say I made them all in 2023 and um I would like to start my Mike's stick season sweaters it's not going to be for Christmas but so I can get something to him you know like get it get it for him before his birthday at least which is in February um yeah and plus I just have a lot of yarn I have other things I want to make that are here that I'm like you know what rain it in <laughs> rain the crazy in okay um, here is my other acquisition. I got three skeins, um, just, I think from Ravelry, D-Stash, someone's Ravelry page. Um, I got three skeins of self-striping yarn because I just, I'm so excited about it. I don't have any other in my stash. Um, I actually found this white birch fiber arts. This is her older label even. And this one is called parties weren't meant to last. It is 80% superwash merino, 10 or 20% nylon, 400 yards for hundred grams. What else is in here? This is hundred grams. I'm assuming it might be one full skein. This looks like this is one full skein, not two small skeins, um, which is fine. What I have found making um, the kettle chip socks is that like, I didn't find it very challenging. Like those are already two 50 gram balls. I think if I were just trying to like use up a whole skein that I might want to just split it. But I think um, her striping was so regular that I would be okay, you know, making a sock and then 
you know, cutting off a little bit to start at the same place or just to have mismatch. I mean, like there's still going to be stripes. Um, that might be fun to have them not exactly the same, but yeah, so this is a really fun purple and gold color. There's some pink in there too. Um, we're a Husky's household. So I actually, um, PNW Pearls has a really fun, um, it like the way that she did the stripes, it's like purple, gold. I think maybe there's white in there too. Um, but maybe it's just purple and gold, but the way that the stripes look, it's like very varsity kind of striping. I think the purple's a little bit longer before the repeats happen. Um, anyway, if I did do self striping socks for Mike, because he's the, has, he's the actual, um, UW grad, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I would probably not pick this one because there's like a lot of pink in there too. So this might be my celebration socks. <laughs> I like to have school spirit, even for not my school. I was a cheerleader after all, right? That's fun. Um, okay, this one, I have two of these skeins, which are, which are both River Knits, BFL, four ply. It's 100% British blue face luster superwash wool. That's what they both are. Um, interestingly, these labels look the same, except for this one has blue faced as one word, and this one has blue faced as two words. <laughs> Um, so they must have been printed slightly different times. Uh, let's see what else. That's all it really says. And this is, it's a, from, um, River Knits, which is a UK dyer because their website is .uk. Um, this is a colorway mermaid. Let me see what's the best angle to show this. These are like really tightly wound, by the way. Like it looks like all squiggly because of that. Um, so I'm gonna focus on the color. There we go. It's got all these really pretty teals and purples, and I have no idea how this self striping is gonna work. Um, it does look self striping because you know, like variegated um, in a skein, you'll typically see like clumps of the color, and these look like crazy town because the stripes, you know, don't line up with each other. And then this one um, is called Indian Giant Squirrel, which maybe is a thing. Maybe a giant squirrel is a thing. Wow, that color is beautiful. That looks extra nice on camera. Um, in real life, it's definitely that vibrant, but it's like I just didn't expect it to pick up. So nice. Um, so pretty. So this is a super folly tone. Oh, this is maybe the one I would make next if I want to pair for me. Um, but this would be like a fun, yeah, this would be a fun, um, gift knit because I don't have to think very hard about sizing or fit or anything like that. And I might do a different heel. This is a thing. <laughs> maybe for a gift, I would try like a forethought heel or even an afterthought heel. Um, because there's like standard places to put them if you don't know, if you just know someone's shoe size. Um, but I can get like, if, if I would gift knit socks, it would be like a family member. And so I can ask them to measure their foot in a certain way. Um, whether or not that's very accurate measurements, <laughs> which is why I think negative ease is important because you can get away with a lot if you have like a, a half inch or an inch of negative ease in length. Um, and, uh, but yeah, this would be a fun one because like that, that color is like so scrumptious. Okie dokie. So I've got three new self striping skeins. I've got um, a sweater quantity from Erin at Backloop Yarn Co. Don't forget her sale ends tomorrow. Um, her a black Friday on un, un Black Friday, even though it, it went over the whole weekend, I think it ends tomorrow. Um, and I think it's like 30% off of everything on her website, including fiber, which she's got some really beautiful fiber rates. That's what's in my basket right now. And I am going to purchase a couple things from her. Um, she has a really beautiful red too called, I think it's called Orchard. Um, that was the other one I was debating to get. And I just, I didn't pull the trigger and now I'm, I'm glad I didn't. Um, but I might get something and I might just get fiber because she has some really beautiful braids in, in um, in combos that I'd like to spin with and, and try. Uh, what else do I have to share? That's all the yarn. That's all the yarn things. I think, um, it is small business Saturday. So I know this will come out like at the very end of the day, but I think a lot of people are having sales through like through Monday or at least through tomorrow. If you can support small businesses, 
you know, that's always nice to do. Um, I got even more tempted to go get this. You guys, I've been thinking about this red yarn. <laughs> Acorn Street uh, Yarn Shop, which is here in Seattle, not far from not far from me, um, is doing like a 20% off of you can use one time in store uh, through the whole month, I think, like through through part of December for like a couple weeks, um, which is exciting and could be fun, especially for those kind of like to get in cascade yarn to get like the things like I don't they don't have tons of hand dyed yarn there. They do have some some um local-ish dyers that they feature there. I know like Serial Knitter sometimes has some yarn there and uh, and others. Um, and they do have a lot of pop-ups, but <sighs> I'm going to be strong. I'm going to resist. I also have some crochet things I really need to get into it because I've been knitting so many like sweaters and things I really, really love. Um, I've just been putting off even starting these things, but they're on the docket. So um, we'll see what comes out of the naughty mess uh knitting studio over here uh in Seattle um in the next few weeks um I almost forgot about books this week so let's talk through a couple of things um one thing I did not talk about last week even though and I think I forgot the week before too um I did finish the second of the um shades of magic book it's called A Gathering of Shadows. And I, like two weeks ago, I thought I was done with it. And then I forgot to talk about it on the podcast, but I didn't even finish it. I had like 13 minutes left of the audiobook, like the very last chapter. Um, and so I did finish that last week and like the week, it sh I should have talked about it last podcast episode. Anyway, I forgot. There, that one's done. Um, I finished new spring this week which uh is by robert jordan and it is wheel of time zero it's the prelude somebody told me somebody um wrote in a comment that i should read that uh if i am reading all of the wheel of time books and i so i stopped book three even though i also have been reading other things besides but i um decided to to get that from the library if i could um and i finished it and it is the story of Moraine and Lan who are like two of the kind of playmakers that are in the regular series and they're like the ones that find the young kids and have been like guiding them through some of this um and they're they're just like characters in in the regular books but it's like their meeting and also their um growth to the positions that they that we know them as so um super interesting it was a good read I was like pretty invested also because I you know like I know they live right so um but it was just really interesting to see like what was happening 20 years before the books um because it's like all about the time at the time of birth of one of the characters um yeah so that was pretty fun to read and now I'm back into book three of the wheel of time so I read this week, I said I wanted some Christmas books and I did it. <laughs> I was spinning actually and I was reading, um, which was good because these ones I really didn't have to pay much attention to. Like these are kind of very fluffy, fluffy blah reads, um, but they're very Christmassy. Um, and so one of them is called, so this is the second in the, the Holiday Brothers books. Um, I read the second and the third this week. One is called Three Bells, Two Bows, and One Brother's Best Friend. The other one is called A Partridge and a Pregnancy. And um, I read the first book, like, I don't know, sometime last year. They're both by Willa Nash. Um, and there's not a lot I'm going to tell you about them because they're just, like, kind of floofy, fun reads. Basically, these brothers... Um, are all like in Montana. That's where they grew up. And like their dad has a custom home building company. Two of them, these two brothers that these ones are, uh, were about our twins and they, um, both work for the dad. The other one is a self-made millionaire, obviously, cause who isn't, uh, <laughs> in these books. Um, anyway, and it's all like each of them, 
Um, actually, so this is kind of fun. I didn't realize until I started reading the second one. It's all about their love stories that all happen like right at the same time. It's just that you don't, you, you're not aware of the other ones as each story is like each of the brothers kind of like goes into their own little world, um, during each of the books, but you kind of like don't know why they've like disappeared or, you know, they like offhandedly mention, oh, I haven't seen them in a couple of days or, you know, whatever, whatever boys say about stuff like that. Anyway, it was fun. Um, very fun, floofy, floofy reads. Uh, and then I, um, was in, okay, a weird mood. Uh, I finished New Spring, maybe like I read those while I was spinning this week. I finished New Spring and then I was like, I want something that's pure trash. <laughs> oh, I finished Things We Left Behind, which is the third in the Knock Em Out series by Lucy Score. Um, I don't know that there's going to be any more books in that series. I was pretty well wrapped up. Like they do a long time later epilogue. Um, and it's so, it's just like, you know, a fun contemporary romance. There is this like plot in the background of all of them. I didn't care about too much, but it's like, um, um, uh, very on the side, something about a mob guy. <laughs> Who's the bad guy? Um, but yeah, this one was an interesting read about like teenagers with a lot of history. Like they were teenage friends a lot of angst and history there um finding their way back to each other and it was good it was really good um the end went pretty quickly like as the as plot started developing it was a there was a couple of twists and turns not anything I didn't see coming but also it was fine um that one has you know it's a little bit spicy same with those Will and Nash books they're like a little bit spicy they're different definitely like romance with some explicitness um they were fun to read though okay but then I was like in a weird mood and I didn't know if I wanted any more Christmas reads because I didn't want I don't I don't even know I don't even know I can't tell you why but I decided I want some angst I wanted a love angst story why we're not watching anything on tv that's got very much angst in it right now and maybe i just making up for that right now we're watching a lot of bar rescue mike has decided he went back to the beginning of bar rescue and he's watching which if you don't know is like this very crazy looking guy who uh and not crazy looking he has intense eyeballs and he gets like a lot of whites around his eyes and he yells a lot <laughs> but he goes into failing bars across america and he helps rescue them um which it basically is like a bar remodel and telling bartenders they're bad at their job because I guess a lot of them are. I don't really know. Um, but uh, yeah, so we were, we were watching a lot of that uh, and Great British Baking Show. So <laughs> yeah, angst. Um, okay, so I started this Wolf Hotel series uh, by K.A. Tucker. And the first book is called tempt me and the second book is called break me and I am almost done no I'm probably halfway done break me so I read I read tempt me very quickly it's about a girl who gets her heart broken by her childhood sweetheart and takes a summer job at a luxury hotel that's just launching in Alaska I love an Alaska book apparently um and uh of course Somehow she ends up catching the eye of the billionaire hotel owner um, who is much older and much more experienced in life than her and naughtiness ensues. Um, it's, uh, this has got, this has got to be like a four pepper one. This is a very spicy, spicy read. Um, but it's also so angsty and like we can't be together and like lots of lies happening and like other plots in the background, you know. Just something that felt fun to read. I think it's a four. There's four books in the series. They're not very long. They're free for me to read on both Kindle Unlimited and Audible. And so I have just been Audible reading them um, as something 
without lots of substance while I'm knitting some things. That is kind of angsty and fun for me. And that is all. That's all for books. Uh, I will probably, um, I, a lot of times, yeah, I don't know. A lot of times I'll do like in the holiday season, especially while I'm baking because it's like I listen to a lot of Taylor Swift radio and other things <laughs> while I'm baking but you know sometimes I want like something in the background that's like I will also put on a lot of ho holiday movies like the classics Santa Claus the holiday uh love actually those kinds of things but um it's a lot of baking you guys I mean like hours so many hours so a lot of times I do a, a reread also like a Lord of the Rings reread or something else that like I can kind of listen to and I don't need to like track a lot of details or I you know I know where I am sometimes it's Harry Potter who knows what it'll be this year um but yeah I'm getting on I'm gearing up this in with the cookies um but yeah so that's that's it for books I'm also prepping for like goals for 2024. I'm starting to think about that more seriously, how I want to do my end of year um, podcast special, which I'd love to know. What do people prefer? I have decided I will do uh, everything I made in 2023. Obviously, I'm new to podcasting. This is my first half of the year. I have not done one before. Um, I have watched a few. Um, I watched Ariel's over the last like couple of days. I guess like a week and a half. Um, I've been watching in segments because there's so many things. And I'm like, I really want to focus on a couple of the sweaters at a time. Um, but what do people prefer? Do you want me to do by category of things? So like all the sweaters, all the, you know, socks, all the whatever, um, or by timeline of when I made them, what kind of details do you want to hear? Give me some notes below because I will try to incorporate like what what people ask for most. I just don't have a preference because I haven't done it yet. So I think as I'm organizing, I'll also come up with a little bit of a preference. Um, I'll also be filming at least, you know, have this kind of like fun segment for us to talk about um, for like some sort of yarn stash segment. So you can also let me know what you want to know about that. Um, I will share with you regardless because I, I feel like it's a fun thing to share. Just like how do I organize online like what you know how do I keep track of what I have um and what I've used and I have a kind of a crazy system for that um being like it's intense it's a little bit intense <laughs> uh but also like I know uh some of the girls that I I think almost all of them actually they do a flat lie so they take all their yarn and lay it on the floor um and then as they go through them throughout the year they like you know cross off what they've used and that doesn't include like the new things coming in, right? It's just like as of Jan 1, what do you have? What have you used? Um, which sounds really fun, but also crazy. <laughs> For me, I don't even think I could flat lie in this office. So I'd have to truck all of this yarn out of here. And then, I mean, I would really love to do this because I could like redo my shelves. Which, you know, I love to do. I love to reorganize, but... Um, I don't know about all that. I could do a picture of each shelf segment and then I could cross out from there. Um, it's hard to tell when you get a lot of like similar color things together, but like I know how many skeins I have everything because I have this tracker. Um, but yeah, and then I'll have a little segment probably after the new, maybe I'll do this one actually like right going into the new year what I want my goals to be. I'm not a strict like goalkeeper for, for craft because I don't want to like stifle the creative energy, right? If I'm like, I must do X, Y, and Z, then I feel like when new things come out or you get into a new part of the hobby, I mean like spinning. I didn't expect to do any of that this year. Now I had some goal that didn't allow me time to spin, then I would, you know, that's kind of upsetting, right? And I don't, so I, you know, I'd either not keep them. <laughs> Um, I've set myself loosey goosey goals before for things like I want to do actually this year's um, I'll share all of them but I have like a very short list some of the things this year for my goals were to do an all over color work sweater I did that in February so that's pretty exciting um, uh, you know and like sometimes it's like try new styles of something uh, but yeah I'm gonna I make a couple of goals um, and some of it is going to be more stash related because I need to be semi stash responsible. Um, 
I'm not getting any more time to knit <laughs> having a one-year-old. Um, and I'm, I just got to continue to not have any more time to knit. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've got like a couple, you know, a couple things that are percolating right now. Um, if you already know your goals though, like I, I, I was so, we did this at knit night the other night. I was like, tell me, um, uh, it was just me, Charlotte and Sylvan. And I was like, what are your goals? What have you done? And like, Charlotte had a pretty strict stash down goal, which I think she's hit, um, or close to it. And that was, she's, um, been the most yarn frugal this year. Um, but then her stash got so small that like when we went to the knit weekend, she bought the most yarn, which we, no one expected, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I've got some goals based on like patterns. I've already purchased like things to make. Again, I don't want to stick myself if I'm like really not feeling another cardigan, right? Even though I have a couple cardigan patterns that I've got on the docket, I will do something else, right? So we'll see how I feel with these cardigans. If I'm going to make these other ones in short order or if they'll wait a little bit longer. Um, and I will share that with you once I figure it out. But I'd love if you share with me if you already know or if you've got some ideas. Or what did you make for goals this year? Have you hit them? Did you throw them out the window? Um, I think it's okay to reevaluate mid-year too. Like it's it's fine. You don't have to stick to something. Especially if you get a new hobby. If you figure something else out. You know like all the different things. Um, but yeah, just thinking about all of this as the year comes to a close, um, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We've got a whole month in a little bit. Um, but yeah, December is going to fly by. I'm really excited for, um, I mean, it's holidays over here. Like also that's why I was ready to wear the sweater because I feel like this is a holiday kind of sweater. <laughs> I'm ready for the holidays. I, um, I love Christmas. Uh, also cause it's like my birthday month. Again, my birthday is a week before Christmas. That's six days before. I have never, my 30th birthday was my most successful birthday. Um, because I didn't plan anything, but my friends, my wonderful friends threw me a surprise 30th. Otherwise my birthday is so close to Christmas. I don't generally do anything <laughs> with other people because they're doing family things there, you know, even as a grown up, I like in a city where a lot of people disperse, like they're so we have so many transplants in Seattle, I had so many friends, um, you know, like they, they leave for the holidays or people go on vacations or they do whatever. Um, as a kid growing up in Pennsylvania, I got snowed out a lot. So my brother is the sick is the 5th of um, January, we're like two and a half weeks apart. So two years and two and a half weeks. Um, but we generally would celebrate our um, birthdays in April. <laughs> it was a pretty safe month for us to have a party that would not get snowed out. Um, so that's why mom just started being like, okay, your birthday parties are going to be in April. Like it's fine. Uh, so yeah, but still, it's still my birthday month and I like to celebrate. Um, I, mostly by myself presents. Um, I do give Mike usually something that he can purchase for me and give to me around my birthday. Um, mostly birthdays around here are a day for us to take off work. Everybody in the house takes off work. Um, by the whole house means Mike and I, because my mom, <laughs> my mom still gets to watch the baby. No, we'll probably spend the day with her going to do something fun together. Um, and it revolves around food, obviously, because food is good. Uh, but that usually is like one special meal that Mike makes for me. And for me, it's always shrimp and grits. And he has gotten very good at making me shrimp and grits for breakfast. <laughs> it was his like greatest, you know, skill acquisition in our marriage. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but yeah, it is a really nice thing that he has learned to make for me. So we're going to roll right in. Um, yeah. Thanksgiving is now over. It's out of our minds. All the pumpkins are put away in the house. All the trees are out and mostly decorated. All, we have the mantles are done. I have a Christmas village. It's like a Christmas explosion here. Um, not in my office. You know, I've really thought about this. Like it's not a big space. I don't know if I'll do any decorations. I have a couple of extra boxes of lights. I might do some like little lights up here. Um, but like you can't see the top of this for calls, like, you know, my calls anyway. And otherwise it's just for me in here. I do have a tiny tree 
that I bring in here so I can have some Christmas joy during the days. Um, otherwise, yeah, this space doesn't get much decoration, but we have big, um, two big living room spaces. My mom has a sitting room. She wants to get her own little tree for, which I said, you do you lady, whatever you want. Um, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited. Can you tell? Okay. Uh, that is all for me today. I don't think this is a super long episode. Um, yeah, but I am getting ready, gearing up for end of year. Um, I would love to know your goals for this year. If you had any, did you make them? Did you throw them out the window? Did you readjust mid year? Um, or are you already thinking about next year? I am not very seriously, but I've written some notes for myself. Um, and what else do you want to know about like, like how I do for suggestions or things you really love for those end of year wrap up videos, both in like stash goals and what I made for the year. Um, what I made for the year will be interesting because I will say I don't have all of it here. Some of them were gift knits. Some of them were samples. So, you know, Tell me the things you'd like to know. And for sure, I'll flash up pictures too. Um, plus, if anybody has suggestions for general episodes or things you like want or you wish I did differently, like I'm here, I'm, I'm doing it for me. But also, if you're here and watching, I'm doing it for you. So um, somebody did ask me and I will, Editor Megan, making a note right now, will make sure I do this. Both my notes and the pictures I flash up of like the patterns for things that aren't complete, um, patterns I bring up as like, things I'm talking about, I will keep up longer. So that was what somebody asked me so that, cause if you're knitting and watching and I'm talking about it, you know, just so it's there for a little bit longer. So I'll keep those notes there a little bit longer. I'll keep pictures there a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, if I have anything else, let me know. I will talk to everybody next week. I hope you have a really great whatever day you're watching this and that you're getting a little bit of the winter spirit in you and you're at least, you know, drinking all the warm, lovely beverages and maybe, you know, you are rolling from the Thanksgiving eating right into the hol other holiday eating. <laughs> I'm going to try not to over here, uh, but the cookies, cookies are coming quickly. What I will say though, really fast before I sign off, I'm just like that person that says buy a thousand times is because I make so many cookies uh, and so many times of types of cookies is that we actually don't eat very many in our house. It's like when you, it's like when I batch cook, like, and I'm not hungry. I'm never hungry at the end of it. That like cooking all of that makes me less hungry. I think it's like you can smell and enjoy all the smells and I'm like not starving. Um, Mike likes to steal a warm cookie, but once they're cooled and they like are in their bags, boxes, cartons to get sorted for boxes, he's just sort of in the no touch zone. I usually give him a little box of things like he's allowed to eat, but he doesn't like a lot of the types of cookies I make. He's like, meh. Um, so yeah, anyway, all of that more to come. Oh, I didn't, I will put a picture up. I didn't bring a, a piece in here cause I, I didn't have any, it's sort of kind of early in the morning. Um, but I did make my lovely pumpkin roll. I'll put a piece, like a picture of a slice up here. It went over well this year. The less sweet cream cheese filling was delicious. And, um, I can put the pattern, right? Pattern. I can put the recipe I use. It's not like very complicated. It's just, it's very close to the Libby's, like what's on the can for a pumpkin roll. I don't know if they put that on the can anymore. They used to sometimes on some cans. Libby's pumpkin, um, like hundred percent pumpkin, uh, would have the, the recipe on the back. It's super similar to that. It's a little bit different. Um, but the filling I use is a whipped cream cheese filling, which has very little sugar in it or a lot less sugar than the original. Um, and yeah, that's all for me. Everybody enjoy. Hopefully what was a long weekend for a lot of you and for all of our international friends, I hope that you are cozying up for the fall things or Bex and our other um, friends from the Southern Hemisphere. I hope you are rolling right into summer and enjoying some of these really fun summer patterns that came out this past year and that I don't know if there are a lot of Australian knitwear designers, but I hope they're coming out with some fun spring and summer patterns too. If you have things to share with us, please do. I will talk to everybody soon. Have a good one. Bye.